Welcome back to the home lab and I've got a really interesting maths problem I want to share with you today and what we're going to do is we're going to solve that problem with a live demonstration using this piece of equipment I've built here and the problem's called the 100 light switch problem. A while back I was watching the absolutely brilliant Number File channel on YouTube and they had a video called the 100 light switch problem and this was a maths problem that I'd never seen before and I didn't know the answer to. So I stopped the video because I didn't want to spoil it and I thought can I have a go at making something myself that will model this maths problem. So the way it goes is you have a hundred light switches all individually wired to their own light bulbs and you have them in a pattern where it's a 10 by 10 grid so there's your 100. Now here's the clever bit unlike mine you have them all switched off to begin with then you start the maths problem and you ask someone to turn on every single light switch that's divisible by one so they switch on one two three four five all the way up to a hundred then you'll find you'll have obviously every light on as in this pattern then the next person switches every switch that's divisible by two and what i mean by switches is if it's on they switch it off and if it's off they switch it on well if you think about it the first person has turned every single one divisible by one on so all the light switches are on so the second person is going to be only turning lights off all the numbers that are divisible by two so they switch off two four six eight etc i think you can guess what's going to happen next the third person comes along and switches every switch that's divisible by three whether it's on or off they flick the switch so they're going to switch three six 9, 12, etc. Then the fourth person comes along and switches every switch divisible by 4, etc, etc, etc. Then the 49th person comes along and switches every switch that's divisible only by 49. And then you can see sort of what's happening now. The 50th person will switch every switch that's divisible by 50, so that's only the 50th switch and the 100th. And then you're into 51, that's only one switch, 52, 53, etc. And you finally get up to switch 100. So the 100th person only switches the switch that's divisible by 100. That's the 100th switch. And if the light's on, they switch it off. And if the switch is uh, showing a light that's off, they switch it on. Now, here's the problem. After all of that, what pattern are you left with? on this panel with all the lights. Are they all on? Are they all off? Or is there some interesting arrangement of how the lights show on the panel? So I haven't thought very hard about this because I didn't want to spoil it in advance. Why don't you stop now and have a think and see what you think you'll get after the 100th person has flicked their switch. So it was obvious to me that a really nice way to show the solution to this problem was to actually build it for real. I'm sure you could do this in software quite easily, but I quite like the uh, sort of mechanical way of doing it. So I thought for a little while about what I would build, and then I realised the easy thing to do was to buy a whole load of light switches that have their own uh, LEDs in them and lay them out on a sheet of perspex in a grid. The colours here have absolutely no meaning at all. I thought it just um, looked quite nice. And I've numbered it across, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the tens, the twenties, the thirties, the forties. So for example, this is 42, switch 42. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is whilst you think about what might happen after we flick the 100th switch, I'll just show you very quickly how I went about building this, just in case you'd like to build one yourself. Just before we start, I wanna say a huge thank you again to all of you for watching and supporting my small channel. I also particularly enjoy the comments that you make and I try and reply to all of them. Also, my thanks goes out to PCBWay for not only sponsoring my video, but for always encouraging me to make new content.
Now, whilst this doesn't include any circuit boards or electronics as such, they've got a fascinating website. And I'm sure if you have a look at that as a maker, you'll find something of interest to you. With the arrival of the switches, it was time to get building. And I plan to use an A3 sheet of blue Perspex as the base to hold all the switches. And I was gonna use a lead acid battery behind to power the thing. At the moment, I'm powering it off my lab power supply. Anyway, uh, I marked out the template using my lovely Blackwing pencils that was a fantastic Father's Day present and my Captain Fields pattern parallel rule, which I really like. And then with this done, it was the usual story for me, drilling 100 holes, which in the end was easiest to do by drilling some pilot holes and then using a 20 millimeter cone cut step drill to finish them off. And I've just about got them in a regular grid. They aren't quite right, but it's worked okay. With the switches mounted in their holes, it was time to bend the Perspex sheet to make a little bit of stand. I then had to do lots and lots of parallel wiring to power all the LEDs in each of the lamps. And I used some copper wire stripped from a length of twin and earth cable. Then for a bit of labeling with my fantastic brother labeling machine and the project was complete. So with it all wired up, it's now time to find out what happens when we use it to solve the 100 light switch problem. Right, let's get started. So you've got some idea of what might happen. So what we've got to do is take the first person that comes along and ask them to switch on every switch that's divisible by the number one because they're the first person. So here we go. And I'll keep going for a minute. And as you can guess, um, when I finish, the first person will have turned on all of the lights. So there we go, that's all 100 lights on. So the second person comes along and if you remember they cycle, that's turn on or turn off, any switch that's divisible by two. So that's gonna be two, four, six, eight, 10. And again, I'll carry on and come back to you in a minute when I've finished. So there we go, that's every switch divisible by two cycled. And you'll notice a pattern forming already that uh, all the even numbers are switched off for obvious reasons. So uh, I won't go through every single one because you'd be completely bored, but let's start with the third person. So they're gonna cycle three, which is off, but this is interesting, six comes back on, nine goes off, and then 12 comes on. So I'll keep doing that and then I'll finish off the third person. And here we go with 99, there we go. So that's all the threes done. So we need to start the uh, ones divisible by four. So four, eight, good. So that's all the nines done. So I've got to do the tens now and the tens are easy. That one, 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 and that one. So let's keep going. So there we go, I've been madly switching on and off switches now for what seems like an eternity. And I've done the 50th turn, so the 50th person. So they switch, switch 50 and switch 100. So now I think you can work out what's gonna happen. We've gotta do 51, then 52, then 53, and they can only switch one switch. Can you see a pattern beginning to form here? So if you look at it here, all of these switches down here 51 onwards, because that's 50, are going to be switched over, which means that all these ones that are currently off are going to come on and the whole bank that you can see are on are going to go off. And then we'll discuss whether we see a pattern. So the camera doesn't seem to like focusing on this at all, but we'll do the best we can. So we've got to do the remaining switches. So 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Can I get that one? 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64 coming on, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and finally the 100th switch coming on. So can you see the pattern that this thing has formed?
Did you manage to see the pattern that this thing has formed? Um, it's quite an easy pattern to see. It's not a particularly easy one to explain. But let me show you how we can build up the pattern. So if you look at the lamps that are still lit, um, and you'll notice there are 10 of them. This is the first one, then the second one, then the third one. And if you take those positions, in other words, let's say the first lamp, and multiply that by two, you realise there are two switches switched off after it. If you take the second lamp that's lit up and multiply that by two, you get four, and you'll notice there are four lamps here that are not lit up. So obviously, if we take the ninth lamp that's lit up and multiply that by two, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 lamps that aren't lit. So it's an interesting little problem, but did you have any idea that that's what we get after we did our experiment. So just before we finish, let's dig down into the math just a little bit further, and it's not that difficult. You might notice there are 10 lamps on, but did you notice where they're positioned? One, four, nine, 16. I hope you noticed they're all squares. One times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine. Four fours are 16 and five fives are 25, etc. So what we've got on here is the squares of all the numbers from one to 10 that are integers, with the last one being 10 squared, which is 100. But there's something interesting that you need to know about square numbers. They always have odd numbers of factors. So just a quick recap on factors. You might remember from your maths that factors are the numbers that will divide into any other number without leaving a remainder. So for example, the number four, you can divide that by two. You can divide it by four, so that gives two factors, but you can also divide it by one, so that's three factors, an odd number of factors. What divides into the number one? Well, only one. So that's got one factor, which is an odd number of factors. And if you look at nine, you can divide nine by itself, always nine. You can divide it by three, so that's two factors, plus you can always divide it by one, so that's three factors. So all of these square numbers have the property that they have an odd number of factors. As I said before, I didn't want to think about this in advance of actually doing it, so I truly didn't know what the answer was. But now I do. It's really quite satisfying. I guess I've built a kind of human power computer that does the maths manually, though granted it is with on off digital type actions. Rather than building one of these yourself, unless you really want to, why not have a go at coding it or even producing an LED array that is driven by a processor doing the switching for you? I think it would make a good talking point. In my case, I now have a sort of useless artifact that will join the dusty shells with all the others I've made over the past couple of years, but it was all great fun regardless. So I do hope you enjoyed this rather unusual and odd video, and maybe you might make one of these and have a go for yourself. Um, do have a look at the number file channel. Um, I've found it absolutely fascinating over the years, and I'm really pleased to have found this, something that was new to me. But being the scientist that I am, I have to build it and try it out and see how it actually works. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon, so do join me then.